Have you heard that if you're not getting enough sleep, you will function as if you were drunk the following day? Have you worried about how you will be able to get through your day if you're not getting enough sleep? Well, if so, I have something truly wonderful to share with you today. It is a study that I believe can change those ideas forever and allow you to not feel so pressured and sleep much easier. It is a study, in fact, that I came across a couple years ago, and I never forgot it. It was really, really wonderful. And it is not this one. It is not this one. In fact, to give you a little bit of background, um, a client of mine uh, shared this with me, so, uh, 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 an article from Healthline with a very triggering title. And that was my plan today. I was, I was like, oh, let's do a herd online on this. And I started reviewing it. And uh, as often we hear that, oh, if you don't sleep enough, you know, it, it, it slows your reaction time, changes your mood. Uh, it says that, uh, you know, you will feel fogginess, daytime sleepiness, difficulty concentrating. And, and I was going through this and I was like, okay, this could be a good herd online episode, but there was really nothing that new here. So, you know, when I saw that, I was like, how about that, that study uh, on, on surgeons? How about that study on Canadian surgeons that I'll never forget? And that really, yeah, that, that, that really changed the way I look at things. And I found it and I was like, this is perfect. So let us, let us look at this study now. Um, it is a study from the New England Journal of Medicine, which is, if you're not familiar with it, is one of the most, uh, you know, well-regarded and prestigious uh, uh, journal. And it, it really publishes these like large uh, large studies that 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 are you know that that are kind of trend setting. I don't know if that's the wrong word, but like it really changes how we look at things. Like it has the potential to do that. So it is from 2015, and um, the um, methods here say that they conducted a population base which like a study in in Ontario, Canada. And I have actually prepared. I have actually gone through this, and and I will share the salient points with you before we look together at the results. So. What was the goal here? Well, the goal, you know, that they, what they say here is that there's been some smaller studies suggesting that if a surgeon is sleep deprived, there's a greater lack, a greater risk of complications. And there was a call back in, you know, the, the, those, those years, 2014, 15, et cetera, to maybe limit the amount of time a surgeon uh, was uh, able to work. And so th this Canadian group decided to, to look at this more closely and, and to produce like a, a large study on this. And so what did they do? Well, they, they allowed anyone who uh, had surgery in Ontario, Canada to be eligible for uh, inclusion. And they had to have had one out of 12 um, daytime procedures. And I actually want to go back here and share them with you. The procedures that could, uh, let's see, that, that could lead you to be um, included here were listed here. Cholecystectomy, gastric bypass, pass, co colon resection, coronary artery bypass grafting, coronary angioplasty, knee replacement, hip replacement, repair of a hip, hysterectomy, spinal surgery, craniotomy, lung resection. My point here, the reason I wanted to go over this was that these are not like a nail removal. You know, these are complex procedures that you know require this requires a surgeon to be focused and pay attention and function at a very high level or there probably will be complications right so anyone who had one of these 12 complex procedures during a five year span were, were eligible for inclusion in this study and what they really compared was this and this is what makes this study so neat it's really cool because they're comparing the outcome of daytime surgery in what they call the post midnight group with a surgeon had worked the night before and the control group where the surgeon was off the night before. And it's actually the same procedure by the same surgeon, but of course, two different people. So if, for example, uh, if a surgeon had performed a cholecystectomy uh, when the surgeon was uh, sleep deprived and when the same surgeon was not sleep deprived, they could compare the outcome in those two uh, cases, right? And uh, so that was the idea. And the outcome they looked at, there, there were many, kind of subdomains, but the big outcomes that looked was like death, readmission to the hospital, or complications. And so the question really is this, will there be more problems after surgery by the same surgeon in a sleep-deprived and non-sleep-deprived state? That is the question, right? 
So what did they find? So here are the results. So they included a total of 38,978 patients. And now this is so different from most of the, the studies where you, you hear that, oh, if you don't sleep enough, you will behave as if you're drunk. That, those are typically like, oh, we took 10 people and half of them you know, were sleep deprived, the other half was non-sleep deprived, and we had them do the psychomotor vigils and test on a computer where they click at buttons and see how fast they react. And, 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 and those are the typical type of studies, but this is robust, this is huge, this is big. 19,000 in each group, you know, post-midnight and control group. There were 1, almost 1,500 physicians included. Uh, they had a mean of 1.25 procedures per night. So that means that for most of the nights when the physician was on call, they did have a surgical procedures. And as you can see, like, say, see, like, if you did, like, a one of these <laughs> complex surgeries at night, whether it was uh, at midnight or 4 a.m. or, you know, 3 a.m. or 6 a.m., you, 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 probably, you, you probably didn't sleep that much. You know, you're probably quite sleep deprived, all right? So with that said, let us go back into the study and look at the results. So what, what, was there a difference between the groups? So we'll, we'll jump into the results here. And we will find the following. Overall, we, we saw how many patients were included. We talked about this already. The medium number of patients pairs per physician was six, by the way. So there were, um, you know, typically there were six pairs. So uh, 12 procedures where they com com compared, let's say, six, you know, close uh, versus six close segments. So, so, you know, pretty good numbers. Um, and here are the outcomes. The primary outcome with included death, remission, or complications occurred in 22.2% of patients in the post-midnight group where the surgeon was sleep deprived and 22.4% of those in the control group when the, the surgeon was not sleep deprived. In other words, no significant difference. There was no difference in that. Well, when they look at the details, so how about deaths? No difference. Readmissions, no difference. Complications, no difference. In other words, there was no difference if the, the surgeon had slept little and was sleep deprived or had slept when it comes to these like a complex functioning, complex tasks like performing surgery. I don't know about you, but that was quite eye-opening to me. So, uh, you know, what, do, what are my conclusions here? I think, I think again that it's possible that if you take a bunch of people and you sleep deprive some of them, like artificially sleep deprive some people, half of them, let's say, and then you do this like psychomotor vigilance testing where you're like, okay, uh, as soon as you see a dot on the screen, you, you react like that. The, it's, it's very possible that the, the group that uh, were made sleep deprived, they may react a little slower, but this is not something that is critical or important. So it's kind of not surprising that you react a little slower. But when it comes to critical functioning, we can find those reserves and we can really function at a quite a high level as this shows. And this also supports a lot of like the anecdotal evidence that we have right here on the channel where Kristen, for example, uh, didn't sleep for three days and she still, still did super well in her like uh, medical school exams. And we hear those stories, or, or Brittany, by the way, who, who slept very, very little and did an Ironman triathlon. And we have so many of those stories here that, that, that align with the findings of the study. Now, you know, especially maybe if you're new to this channel, you may wonder like, what, okay, Coach Dan, I was like, what's your intent with this? Are you trying to say that we should just like stay up uh, many nights and then we should drive a car and like nothing's going to be fine? No, of course not. No, we, we all have responsibility to, you know, not do things that may be dangerous to us or other, or other people when we feel like, you know, we're sleep deprived, we're not functioning well, et cetera. It's not about that. My intent with all this is, of course, to decrease the fear you may have had, pressure you may have had. And, you know, when, when the pressure comes down, when the fear comes down, then peaceful sleep can happen. And then we don't even have to think about sleep deprivation and you can live that best life that we all want to live. So that is my intent. I hope this, uh, this uh, episode of Heard Online has been super helpful to you. And... If you like our way here, our, our way of combining like review of the literature plus like insight into um, you know how the mind works, our anatomy philosophy, and you would like some support and guidance on your path to finding yourself again, feeling like yourself again, living your best life, then 
head over to our website, find a coaching option that fits you. And if you decide to join, we cannot wait to see you on the other side. That is it for today. Look forward to having you with me tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.